Welcome back, everyone, to the Music City Open. We are in round three of the lead card of the FPO division out at Mill Ridge Disc Golf Course near Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Sarah Hokum here with Zoe Andike. Thank you for joining us, everyone, for this coverage. We are on a different course for round three today. We are at Mill Ridge, and here's a look at our leaderboard after round two. Got a tie for first place and a couple of ties for third and a brand new course, so let's see how the action unfolds. Starting off with a very, very small gap, but short hole one, it's a par three, 215 feet, a little bit of elevation loss, but surrounded by OB. You can see that OB is actually inside of the circle on the right hand side, but completely lining the fairway on the left with such a small gap to get out of. Haley up first. She's going with a mid. Really smooth throw. You can see she kind of puts her whole body into it and she parks it. I was just going to say parked. Great way to start. I'm up next. This is a reactor. Maybe just a little high out of the hands, but as you can see, nice and safe for the upshot. <laughs> yeah, we had a little bit of a headwind that I did not account for. I was more worried about the tiny gap to hit. <laughs> Juliana up next, throwing her putter, an AVR. And a nice nice shot out the gap there, giving her uh, pretty much a death putt there, but definitely a chance for the birdie. And Valerie throwing her Nova. Oh, she oh. releases it inside and gets through the other gap that I didn't know even was there um, and stays safe. It's pretty good for to start off with the first hole, staying clean, not going out of bounds. Very good. Nice upshot there by Sarah. Valerie with a long look. We assume she's going to kind of lay this up. The slope on this shot is pretty extreme, and any if you're not landing flat, it's likely to roll away. Oh, I wasn't feel, a layup. Yeah, I that feel was like a she run. Gave that a full bid and land safely. Happy to tap out a par on this difficult but short hole for the birdie. Juliana leaving it just a little bit short. Again, landing safe, though, for the tap-in. Looked like a little bit nervy on that first putt, which is really common. And Haley for birdie. Starting off with a solo birdie. Going up by one on the field. So this is the like one of the newest courses on tour, and I believe the PDGA has been kind of adapting this for the last five years or so, been working on getting it all ready, and course designer Sean Sinclair trying to create a challenging layout, and I think he did, as you're, as you're going to see through these next 17 holes. And hole two, par four, it's 573 feet super drastic downhill blind hole um, once you get over the trees or through the gap going uphill drastically and again you still can't see the basket even after your first shot but you're gonna have to choose a huge wide hyzer or else go through the tree gap in order to see the basket really appropriately designated par four here yeah, and it seems like the backhand hyzer on that second shot is a little bit more open, but you can go either left side or right side um, on, your, on that second shot. Haley up first, throwing a Zeus. Beautiful drive over the top of those trees. Great power and putting her in great position for that left side gap you were talking about. Those are the shots we all dream of. <laughs> yes. I'm throwing a Vanish.
comes out a little low, but sneaks over the top of that tree, and I'm in the fairway. Juliana going with a turn. And she puts a pretty good move on that, and you can see there's a little bit of wind. Um, she finishes out left, so that'll pretty much only give her the left side gap. And Valerie up next looks like a shrike. Doesn't quite get enough turn on it, and she trickles oh. into the rough. And man, this rough Oof. is rough. There's also, on most of the tall trees in the rough that we see, there's a little stream or creek running through the inside of that that she is taking some casual relief from. So she's able to kind of just pitch out, and now she's on her third Well, that was a pretty powerful shot for the major elevation gain there. But she does throw it into that cedar tree that blocks your view of the basket, so she will have another difficult shot. That's a shock. All right. Got Just a, inside the circle. Nice little tree kick there and an open look. Juliana... Ooh, throwing a mid right by the basket. Beautiful. And this is going to be a drastic forehand hyzer for Haley. Well executed. Uh, and she's just outside the circle, a little bit obstructed by those trees hanging down. And Tough position this here. Is Valerie's fourth throws a really nice wow. shot. Yeah. Leaving her about 15 feet. This is Haley's look for Birdie. Very, very small gap. She's going to have to spin, put a pretty serious spin putt on this one. Now she has no room to go up and down, really. Yeah, just couldn't quite get it high enough with the, that obstruction. And this is for Birdie. Beautiful. Man. Had great. to go to my less traditional putt, going to a spin putt <laughs> with that ceiling that Haley and I both had to deal with. And this is Valerie f for the bogey. And that was a good, very good putt. I'm sure at that point, you know, having a little bit of trouble early in the fairway. It's tough, and when a player makes a putt like that, it actually adds to the confidence saving that bogey. Haley tapping out the par, and Juliana will tap out the birdie. Again, a really fair hole. We saw a couple of birdies, a par, and a bogey. Look at that straddle putt and that spin. Very nicely done. <laughs> and we'll be moving on to hole three. It is also a par four, 654 feet. The fairway is lined on the left-hand side with the thick, rough trees, but a huge open field on the right for the first drive. And as you can see from the flyover, once you have approached the green, it is completely surrounded by trees. I'm throwing a trace. Just getting out there, max distance off the tee is what's required for this hole. Kind of need a little turn up that hill as a backhand. So Julianne is going with a road runner just to get that carry forward without it hyzering into that left side. And there is a little bit of wind out, out here on the course for us today. Haley going back to that Zeus. Oh no. But catches that upper tree and it gets smacked down not too far off the tee. Valerie puts a nice shot out there. Nice, nice turning shot that leaves her up high on the hill. Haley with a lot of work to do from here. 
who, and I think in an attempt to put a lot of distance on it, she may have overturned that quite a bit. That's a wall of trees now between her and the basket. Yeah, I think she would have wanted to be more on that left side where the gap to the hole is. Valerie looking to turn that right, but it hyzers out and she is in the rough once again. I've got about 350 to the pin. I'm throwing a trace. And nice and around that corner, looking at the basket. And Juliana's going to need a pretty drastic turnover here. She's going back to that road runner, and that's a great shot. She turns it enough to keep it in the short grass, and she's got an open look at the basket. So Haley's got to go up and over here. She's throwing, it's, she's looking at that big spike hyzer. Just extreme angle to get over those trees. And she executes wow. it really well. Wow, that was fantastic. Up and over when you can't even see the basket. I was kind of holding my breath when she did that. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's kind of a crazy shot. And Valerie, excellent throwing shot. A roller and puts herself inside the circle. And that was a good camera angle to display just how thick the rough is. Juliana laying up here just to get her par. I've got a little bit of an Anheuser putt with that tree blocking my straight putt. Ooh. Catch the cage. Good angle on that. And this will be for Haley's par. What a save. Yeah, I mean, she lost all the distance off the tee and was still able to get in there for a par with some a couple of masterful shots. <laughs> Valerie also pitching out of the rough and looking to save her par with this short putt. Excellent. Yeah, the up and downs on, on this card, pretty impressive. That roller coming out of that thickness like that is no easy task. It's almost as hard to get into the rough to get to your disc as it is to throw out of it. Yeah. I know on my card, there was definitely a little bit of even blood drawn from the thorns in there. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. So 14% of the field got this birdie. So it's definitely gettable, and uh, we have some messages from our sponsors. We'll be right back after this. When I walk up to the tee, I have these game plans. I think I'm gonna land in these same areas every single time, but you never know. Having the Bushnell Rangefinder, no matter where I land, gives me that extra level of confidence. I'm Garrett Gerthy. People know me as Double G. I've been making Double G Crab Jerky since I was 16 years old. Whether I'm at home or on the road, Double G Craft Jerky is the snack that I go for. I've actually found myself eating Double G Craft Jerky on my long drives to the next tournament. We all know Double G's got a big arm, but he's also got a big heart. Every bag of Double G Jerky that you buy supports children's disc golf and goes to a great cause. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com. We're back here with hole number four, another par four. 623 feet to the basket. It's a huge open field. We're lined with OB on the left, and there is actually a fence line or property line OB to the right. Once you've gotten to three quarters of the way down the fairway, very small tree gap and a very protected basket green. We had a tailwind on this hole as well today, so players will have to contend with that shot dropping and hyzering out a little bit early. I'm throwing a trace. And well done, you wanna be center or even on the right side of the fairway in order to approach that gap. This is Juliana throwing a road runner. Doesn't quite get over on it like she needed to. Oh, yeah, that tailwind definitely didn't provide any turn for her. Haley up next, throwing a Zeus. 
puts it really far to the right, but up so high that it also fades and almost goes out of bounds. Wow. But she is safe. Leaving her a nice hyzer angle into the gap, though. Valerie going with a shrike. Also, she throws it nice and low, but gets this crazy ground play, and the wind just pushes her out. And for as thick as this ground is, I mean, although it is mowed, we're talking about some pretty thick grass, so the skips were pretty surprising. Yeah, I think the players themselves were pretty surprised that there's so much room on the right to work the disc, but that OB line comes up quick. Juliana throwing a turn around the corner. And there is a triangle of out of bounds right there. Kind of cuts in before it goes back out lining the green. But she is safe, but in the kind of she'll have some obstructions with some small trees. Valerie Beautiful. up next and throws a great shot. That'll be to save her par. I've got an insanity in my hand. I'm looking to flex it through the gap and have it finish left, but it turned it a little bit early and end up um, just outside the gap on the left side, but safe. This is Haley with her stalker. Just throwing it around the wow. corner. Great shot. Based it. Pretty neutral um, fairway driver that she just threw a perfect hyzer with. This is a spin. I was looking for it to turn a little bit more, but still pin high, and I have a putt for par. Juliana with a patent pending stance here to give herself some open swinging room. Just laying it up to the basket. She doesn't want to mess around. This is Valerie's par putt. All right, up and down. Both her and her sister Alexis have really strong putting strokes. They're quite, they're quite different, but they're both very consistent. Very consistent. That's in for par. Another very appropriately labeled par four here. Yeah, this is a pretty good hole. It takes the placement and then you still have to play, you know, it's got woods and open golf all the way, all, all in one, packaged into one cute little hole. <laughs> and also birdieable, 14% of the field got the birdie on the day. You can see Valerie's white hand extending to the basket she uses climber's chalk as her um, moisture absorbing and here is hole five we've got a par three it's 242 feet and not a whole lot of elevation maybe just a tiny bit of gain but look at that gap i mean the basket is staring straight at you just looking to be birdied or even ace ran however the gap is very narrow to get through and it's also, the gap is like at the edge of the circle, so you can't just hyzer in and expect to really get to park the basket. It's got to be almost a straight shot to get all the way in there. Haley going with her zone. I'm throwing a relay, and I turn it over. So it kind of it trickles down to the edge of the opening. Valerie looking for that to turn a bit more, and she punches through to the inside of that gap, but it is a difficult putt from there. Juliana going with a leopard three. Also trickles into the gap with a putt for a birdie. I don't have a very good look at the basket, but just kind of trying to throw a little touchy sidearm that was a great shot Valerie kind of obstructed in the vines doesn't really have a look at the pin just lays it up Juliana 
Looking down and checking to see the distance, I believe, from the basket there. She's also got this tree kind of in her backswing area, so she's trying to make sure she doesn't hit it, but okay. unfortunately, I think that causes a little bit of a misfire. And Haley is really close, but she is very obstructed. Yes. Doesn't quite have the push to get it into the chains. So, wow. So this is a short little hole, 242, straight line. Seems like it would be kind of a birdie, a given birdie, but it was not for this card. Nobody cashing in on the birdie on the lead card, but 33% of the field actually got this birdie today. I got to love, shout out to the design of this hole. I mean, one of the most satisfying shots, I believe, in disc golf is a straight shot. Definitely. Tough to pull off, though. Taking a look at Juliana's form. Using all that left side of the body to follow through. And here is hole number six. It's a par three, 289 feet. Got a significant elevation loss, but the real, the whole thing about this hole is that it's an island and it is not a very wide island. I would say all of 40 feet wide, completely surrounded OB because it's an island. And if the player does not make it on, you must go to the drop zone with a one stroke penalty. Haley stepping up with a zone. The forehand is a great play here, getting through the gap. She parks it. I'm throwing a shock, looking for a big fade at the end. I put it up a little bit high, doesn't get the carry I'm looking for, and OB. Very tricky island hole here. Valerie also going sidearm with some with an overstable driver and parks it right next to Haley. I guess it's just that easy. <laughs> yeah. So Juliana doesn't really like to throw a lot of sidearms, um, especially off the tee, so she's going to throw the straight putter shot. She'll still have a look at the pin. Yeah, she's inbounds just outside of the circle and the straight shot Again, I throw backhand more dominantly, so the slower speed disc straight shot is a good play if you're just planning to par. And I'm here to give you a look at the drop zone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll work for, that the, good for the bogey. Juliana outside the circle for birdie. Just kind of feeling the wind, assessing her putt. And just oh, a little short. That was really close. Mm -hmm. Speaking of close. Tap-in. Tap-ins for Haley and Valerie. Great birdies. And a shout-out to three other players in the field that got the birdie. Christine Jennings, Deanne Carey, and Sarah Gilpin. Also capitalizing on this difficult hole. Very few pars. Most of the time, if you made the island, you were getting that birdie 75% bogey or worse. So, risk reward to the T. Absolutely. And we will be right back with a message from our sponsors. Passion is more than fiery emotion. It feeds the spark to start your day. It fuels your obsessions. It inspires your dreams. Passion challenges your fears and it repeatedly bathes you in sweat until you are transformed into a new, better you. Disc golf isn't just your passion, it's ours too. You've seen them in the hands of professionals helping them compete at the highest level. Whale Sacks is a female owned small business, handmade in the USA. We are dedicated to outstanding grip for all disc golfers. We're back here, hole seven. It's a par four, only 452 feet, but again, very appropriately designated par four. It's a tricky, tricky hole where you have to have some good placement off of the tee shot. This, uh, the drone is gonna fly through this first gap here, but really you can go, you can lay it up to that gap or place it to that gap or go far 
to make a kind of an ante or even a sidearm around to approach the green. Yeah, a couple placement shots here off the tee. I think that the ideal placement is about 250 for that shorter gap. And then if you want to throw to the longer gap, I'm thinking it's more like 300. So Haley going Zeus and going to the longer gap kind of opens up the shot, but it does take a little more power off the tee. Valerie also throwing the sidearm. She's going for the shorter gap. There's such a low ceiling that even though some of the players in the field might be able to throw 450, there's no room in the airspace to get a shot up high enough to do that. So it really plays as a two-shot hole, and placement is key off the tee. Looks like Juliana's trying to get that farther, more open gap, leaving herself somewhere in between. Yeah, that is probably the place you don't want to be. This is a photon, I'm looking to control the distance, ensure that I don't throw too far. I'm also looking for that shorter gap. And looks like you got it there. Valerie lining up, looking like she's gone through or over the right side gap. Yeah, she's gonna go with the spike hyzer, which takes just a lot of control and, and disc knowledge, and she gets up there for a putt. I'm throwing a pyro, also looking to control the distance. The pyro has a big fade and I uh, have about a 15 footer. So Juliana is kind of stuck here. She's got to throw a huge Annie to get to the pin or um, she's just going to lay up around the corner and leave herself another shot to get to the pin. And I think that was a pretty smart play. She definitely squeezed it as thin as possible there for the layup. Haley would have liked to have thrown it a little farther off the tee. She's dealing with that other gap that I didn't even really see until now. <laughs> <laughs> and puts it right next to the pin for her birdie. Juliana pitching up with her Nova. That'll work. And this is for birdie. Great stroke and a great score on this hole. This hole definitely, it's one of the holes that starts to show you you really needed to do your homework on this course. Heard a lot of players say they didn't have time to play it, including myself. And with a course like this, it's got teeth. You've really got to know where you want your shots to be placed and where you want to go. Valerie makes that putt to go two in a row. So making a move, she goes to six down, and Haley also gets that one. That means three out of four of the last holes. Haley has birdie, putting her at minus 11. Wow. She is starting to separate herself from the rest of the card. This hole is one of the, actually plays as the easiest hole on the course. 42% birdies and only 8% bogey or worse. And we are on hole eight, par five, 860 feet. We've got OB lining the left side of the, this first portion of the fairway and pretty much natural OB on the right with the tree line. Kind of a wall of trees there if you do not get left enough off of your drive. Then we're taking a drastic turn to the right. Again, lining with that natural OB on both sides with trees small gap on the left as we get get there with the flyover and then the pin is actually taking again one more right hand turn in a nice open field so zigzag hole <laughs> it zigs then it zags then it zigs and it zags again yes and it's actually on a little bit of a mound there the basket so for a righty backhand just wanting to throw about a 330 foot hyzer to place your shot Haley going with a Zeus, puts it in great position, well clear of the out of bounds. And of the tree wall. <laughs> Valerie up next. And she doesn't quite throw that flat enough and comes up short in the OB. She will have, she will only advance um, about a couple hundred feet. I'm throwing a trace 
I'm really just trying to clear the out of bounds. I'm not too worried about getting too far left, even though that would be ideal. If I go too far left, I will be in the out of bounds. And for the players that chose to go either straight up or ended up landing safely where you are, then they have a choice whether they're going to place themselves in position or throw over the trees. That's very doable. So that was Juliana's turn, also in really good position. And this will be Valerie's third. And she throws it a little bit low as she's trying to traverse mm. those trees and ends up in the rough. I'm throwing a photon. And I've decided to take an alternate fairway. Instead of spiking it to the right, I'm actually going to play the far left side of the fairway and take all of that, all of those zigzags out of play. Very, very good choice there. I bet a lot of players didn't even think or know that going wide was an option. Juliana and I were talking about the, the alternate fairway, and she also decided to try it out. I didn't notice it until I played the hole in practice. After I finished the hole, I looked back and I was thinking, why am I going this direction when it's wide open around the outside? But Haley, great shot. in perfect position off the tee, now puts herself again in perfect position on her second. This is Valerie's fourth. And as you can see, she's looking, she's just looking for a way to even pitch out. She's in the jailhouse here. And she pitches to the, just outside, just outside, and then she's pitching again. That is her fifth, and this is her sixth. She's looking for that gap, but oh. ends up in the left side rough. And still not even a look at the basket. No. So I'm here on this outer fairway. This is a photon. I'm looking to get around the trees and fade hard right to get myself as close to the pin as possible. Wow. There's so much less work over there. And I'm about I just under it. 200 feet. Mm -hmm. Juliana also looking to kind of get lateral to this fairway. Turns a little bit, but with the backhand, she's not quite getting that same fade, but she is relatively open and has a look to get up and down for the par. And this is Valerie's seventh. And she's gonna need something a little more overstable because she's gotta put it on Annie and hoping for the fade back outside of circle two there, but at least an open look. And Juliana, this is her fourth shot. I believe this is her atlas. Slow down. She crunches it way past the basket, <laughs> but she's, and she's outside the circle. There was a tailwind on this shot that I did not read properly. So I also kind of sail past the basket, but we both have putts for par. This is Haley's third. She's way up there. And she puts it pretty close, and that is a birdie putt, folks. Wow. Important timing here for Valerie. Really trying to stretch and, and make that connection, just going past the basket. Juliana for birdie. Wow, and she cashes it. And actually, that was for her par, but that was, oh, it was such a big putt that it <laughs> actually me? felt like a birdie. <laughs> right, on this hole, this one's a doozy. I mean, she didn't, she didn't even take a jump there, so it was a very, very good putt right outside of the circle. And Sarah is left with like a 25, 28-footer here. Yeah, uphill onto this mound, and I've got a headwind, so a lot of things going on. Trying to get that up high enough. Just a little nose down. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I was pretty happy with how I played the hole, despite now having a bogey on it. And this is Valerie. No. That was her ninth. So really a tough hole for her. I feel for her. 
She was in that rough quite a bit. And then that OB off the tee, the strokes just piled up. But on the other hand, we have Haley, who has played the hole perfectly so far and cashes in the birdie. Basically wow. writing the textbook here for how to eat this hole alive. That was an awesome birdie. And the only birdie in the field, actually, on this second most difficult hole on the course. Wow. Excellent golf. And that's three in a row for King. She is just putting a hurt on the field on this front nine. Take a look at Juliana's par putt. Oh, so good. Sneaking in the left side. And rounding out our front half of round three top card. This is hole number nine, par three, 355 feet. Got a little bit of elevation loss here and obviously super rough on the whole left side of the fairway. Once you get around that corner, big open field to the green here. And a lot of our players could potentially get in there for the putt. Um, 355 feet is a, a little bit of a stretch out, but for a righty backhand, just lacing a straight shot and watching it finish. Um, for somebody with all the power that Haley King has, she can throw a hyzer. And she does. This is her Zeus looking for a big fade. She looks like she might have put it out a little bit wide. She may want to cut that corner a bit more, but she is right out there for a long look for birdie. Juliana going with a turn. Puts it a little tighter. And that turn is going to get more carry left with its lack of stability. Great shot there. She's inside of circle two. I am going to concede this hole to a par and throw my sidearm out to the left and let it fade to the right. That's a trace. But please tell me you, you did try the backhand out after the last couple rounds of Cedar. <laughs> I did, but I kept ending up in that left rough and I was like, that's not worth it. I'm not going to get there anyway, so I'm just going to play the conservative shot. But Valerie, however, has a great backhand and pops it way out there and inside circle two. This is about 150 feet. I'm throwing an Envy, looking to put it nice and close. And close it is. That'll work. And Haley from outside circle two, looking about 75 feet. There's a bit of a headwind here as well. She puts it under the pin. Pars are good. And Valerie lining up a powerful jump putt here. Oh, very oh, good bid. This is great height. Leaves herself a little bit of a tester on the way back. Juliana closest to the pin. Looking to put a run on this to get another circle two putt under her belt. Just a little bit right there, but no work left to do. This is my par putt. Happy to sneak away uh, on this hole that doesn't really favor my particular strengths. I'll take a par. Pars are good. And Valerie looking to clean up her par. Going through her routine, gathering her confidence, and making the putt. A little low, but in the basket, and that's what counts. And Juliana and Haley will tap out some pars. Joining 83% so, of the field with the par there. Yeah, so really difficult to get, but we did see a couple players get this one. Katrina Allen and Rebecca Cox got the two on the day. So kind of a tough hole, but certainly gettable. And that's our front nine. So everybody's kind of getting their uh, feel for Mill Ridge, the newest addition to the tour. And we will ha take a look at the overall scores after the front. Haley way out in front. She's five down in the round, extending her lead to minus 12. Wow. I'm sitting at even, sitting right at minus seven, and Juliana and Valerie are at minus five. 
and we've got an exciting back. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the back half.